Hey guys, it's Jane. Happy New Year. Um, this is going to have to be really quick because um, the rest of the family is rampaging around and children are crying and screaming and yeah. I'm not going to have very long to do this in. But I hope you're staying out of the weather. Um, whether that means uh, the cold or the heat. It's supposed to be 43 here today and I'm not looking forward to that. So we're going to try and get this done early. Um, I hope that you have made a good start to your reading year. Um, I've finished three books and I've enjoyed all of them. Um, but if you have had a bad start to the year, don't let that put you off. The first book that I read in 2017 was terrible. In fact, it was probably my least favourite read of the entire year. Um, but uh, that did not set the tone for what ended up being a fantastic year. So if you've had a bit of a shaky start, don't let that put you off. Um, the three books that I finished this week have all been Murn Mysteries. Um, beginning of the year I usually feel like a bit of a change of pace and I know murder mysteries aren't all that much of a change of pace for me but not science fiction so yeah. Um, I've enjoyed all of them. The first one was the best um, so I'll get back to talking about that in a minute. The second and third were the first two in the Essa Katak and Rachel Getty series. The first one's called The Unquiet Dead and the second one's called The Language of Secrets. And uh, they follow Essa Katak, um, who is the head of the Community Policing Division in um, Toronto. And that division inside the police is about um, both speaking into immigrant communities from a police perspective um, and um, representing those communities back to the police, uh, mainly um, Muslim communities. That's the focus in these first two uh, stories. The first story uh, is about a guy who falls to his death. The second one is about a, um, a murder inside a suspected terrorist cell. Both of them have really interesting stories and the central um, pairing of police, Essa Kadak and his sort of deputy, Rachel Getty, are an interesting um, uh, pairing. They put me in mind of Inspector Lindley and Barbara Havers in the Elizabeth George stories because he is older and, um, you know, well-dressed and sophisticated and she is rough around the edges and sort of lower class. But they kind of both fill in each other's weaknesses. So I like the central pairing, but um, the execution of these books, despite the fact that they have interesting stories, leaves, leaves a little bit to be desired. Obviously, I didn't like, uh, dislike the first one uh, enough to make me not want to keep going, but there's things like, you know, every other character is described as being, you know, hard, stoppingly beautiful. And things like that kind of get me down. A little bit. I mean, you know, three breathtakingly beautiful people in the course of one novel is too many. And there's more than that in this. So that's that's a thing that just always gives me pause. And um, there's also, uh, there's lots and lots and lots of detail going on. The author, I think, is actually a human rights lawyer um, in her day job. And the first one deals with the, the um, aftermath of the Bosnian War and there is huge amounts of detail put in in a, a somewhat clumsy way. But having said all of that, I, I did enjoy it. And the second one um, has some of the same flaws, but I think the execution of the second one is a bit better. The other murder mystery that I read is one of the best most enjoyable crime fiction books that I've read um, in, in a long while, not including Attica Locke's um, Bluebird, Bluebird, which is quite a different sort of thing. That's a much more gritty, modern take on a crime story. Magpie Murders is a very English, uh, golden era detective sort of story. It's by Anthony Horowitz, you know, one of the great prolific talents of the literary world and the structure of it I found um, really innovative and interesting. A murder mystery author turns up dead just having handed in a manuscript 
of his latest book to his um, publisher, but the last pages of it, the conclusion, the, the reveal of who, who done it is missing. So we get the entire text of the book that he wrote and then we get his editor um, setting out to investigate what happened in the lead up to his death in order to try and track down the missing pages and as she um, investigates she comes to the conclusion that it wasn't a suicide as many people thought but in fact there's more to it than that and so then the second half of the book is this second murder mystery of what happened to the author and then at the very very end we get the resolve of the first mystery because she does find the pages and we we hear the end of that first story so um, it's a two for the price of one you've got a contemporary setting but still very classic English sort of murder mystery type story and you have um, the book that he wrote which is this golden age English village with the vicar and the, the manor house and yeah if anybody is a fan of classic detective stories that's a big recommendation um, having finished those I'm now in the middle of reading another non-science fiction fantasy book um, it's a lit fic by Michael Chabon who has written spec fic in the past um, and I really enjoy his writing and this one um, Moonlight is a corker so hopefully I'll have finished that and can tell you about it next week but um, that's it for me today I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.